Hey guys, welcome back. Luke here again with you and in this video we'll be carrying on from yesterday from laminating our hydrofoil wings and today we're going to do our hot coat or filler coat more specifically and get these wings looking perfect. So let's get into it. So the first step will be just to clean these up with some sandpaper. I'll be using the random orbital with a 60 grit on it again and also this tool again uh, with a 60 grit. And what we're trying to do is just clean up any of these sort of sharp spiky areas, any build up where it's lapped. You can see this sort of a, a lump there. Uh, we're going to be just smoothing, blending out this cut lap, getting rid of all of the tape and just making that relatively smooth. Uh, just looking for any basically highs that just need to be knocked down and smoothed down. Then we'll be, as we paint on the resin, that is kind of the finished surface, but don't don't expect too much out of this, this the filler coat. So when I was learning, I would sort of I sort of thought that um, the filler coat would would give me more thickness, but it doesn't. So we sort of want to get this really close to exactly the shape that we want, knocking out all of those highs, blending in any areas that need to be blended in without burning through the resin, uh, so without the, burning through the fiberglass now. So just be mindful that you're not sanding too much, but at the same time, get this to a nice finish so that when we paint on this filler coat of resin, it's pretty much done and we can just lightly sand it from that point on. Of course, we'll also be doing the trailing edge. So to do the trailing edge, I'm just going to blast this down with the random orbital sander off this side. You could cut through with a bandsaw here, uh, but I just find it comes off pretty quick just by sanding it. And we want to leave about four millimeters so you'll see the clear through the back, or three millimeters would be enough, but you'll see a very thin clear edge and the idea is there that that's, that's enough uh, thickness or, or surface so that the top and the bottom laminations are sticking together there. You won't get any cracks in the back. So let's start sanding. Okay, so now we're finished cleaning up the wings. You can see I've sanded them to a nice smooth finish. If you are not used to sanding, I'll just give you a couple more quick tips because I know it can be difficult if you're just starting out the sanding process actually. Um, so I've used the sander to really try and flatten 
all the surfaces, meaning that I've sanded every surface here. You wouldn't normally do that with a surfboard. You don't need to sand every surface. The texture of the cloth is fine to actually just put the filler coat of resin and it will adhere to it. The reason that I'm sanding the whole thing is that we want these wings, because they're, you know, they're so critical that they're smooth and symmetrical, we want them to be really clean remove all of those highs and lows and so I actually use the sander just with very light pressure just to sort of buzz over those surfaces and try and flatten any of those surfaces so I'm doing the same thing for the front wing so an example here is right here you may be able to see just this black patch there that black patch was actually sort of a lump so where more resin might have been underneath that cloth or or there might have been a build-up or, or a, you know multiple layers of fiberglass when they're when they're lapping on the underside of any of our cut joints and things like that. And so what we're trying to do is just smooth all of that out because it's definitely going to get hit in the next stage of sanding. When we sand it after the filler coat, then the sand is going to go through that. So I actually like to get ahead of that a bit and sand the whole surface, just smooth out any of those imperfections so that when we do our filler coat and then do our next sanding, it doesn't burn through everything. That said, it's very important not to burn through the fiberglass. At the moment, the fiberglass isn't very well protected. It's only the fiberglass that's saturated with resin. So we're basically sanding right on that fiberglass and you definitely don't want to sand through it or even weaken it. So you have to pay very special attention that you're not over sanding it, but at the same time trying to blend all of those surfaces. If you find that there's any air bubbles, which you may very well find, I found a couple. So there's one right here on this leading edge right there. What I like to do is just chip that out with a with a knife or a razor blade. So get rid of any flapping fiberglass. You don't want to leave that flapping fiberglass in there. And we'll just fill that with resin now when we do the filler coat and it will come up really nicely. So look, uh, one other thing that I like to pay attention to actually is where the fuselage connects. I like to buzz the sander over this area. Again, light pressure, letting the sander sort of flatten that surface and just making sure that this is very flat where we're going to be connecting to, this, to the fuselage. Of course, I trimmed all the way down using the sander. Nice parallel line all the way through the trailing edge as well. And you should feel now that it all feels really good. It's nice and smooth. Maybe there's a couple of little air bubbles that small imperfections there that are going to fill. But other than that, it feels like the right shape and we're ready for the resin. There is a mound here, of course, where we have uh, the additional layers. You're not trying to blend that out too much. That's fine. But, um, you know, so you'll notice that. But other than that, it feels really, really smooth from side to side. So we're ready to do our filler coat which is great news. We're really getting close to finishing now. So let's get the resin out and we'll do the filler coat. We're going to be mixing it up with 60 grams of resin. Now you may sometimes hear that this is called a hot coat. So a hot coat would refer to a quicker set in resin, but we use exactly the same. So this is just the normal resin mix, two to one ratio with the catalyst. And uh, we're just gonna paint it on using a paintbrush. To get started, we're going to actually do the bottom first. And so we're going to, with this, in this step, there's two ways that resin will adhere to itself. One is mechanically, so by sanding it or making a rough surface, and the other is chemically. So if we actually do our second coat of resin within a certain time frame, while the other resin is still setting, they will bond together chemically. And so that's what we're aiming to do with this filler coat. So we're going to do the underside. We're going to wait the perfect amount of time till it's just gone hard, where you can still sort of press your fingernail into it so it's still soft enough to have a chemical bond. We're going to flip it over and we're going to do the filler coat on the other side. So let's mix up our resin. Like I said, we're going to be doing 60 grams of resin. So 40 grams of part A and 20 grams of the hardener. Okay, so that's all mixed up. About two minutes worth of mixing. And what we'll do now is actually paint it onto the underside uh, to the bottom surface of the foil but one thing to mention is you want to make it about as flat a surface as you can so I've just put that stick underneath the back to make this nice and flat so the resin doesn't try and flow off in any direction. I've also put masking tape just on those sticks that are supporting it so that if resin does get under it it'll stick to the tape and make it easier to pull off and then you can just sand the tape off instead of it actually sticking to the wooden stick or, or whatever you've got it resting on. Okay so all we're going to do now is basically just pour this on and using, oh, just before you do that, just try and, with these disposable brushes, it's worth just trying to get some of these bristles out 
before you start with these filler coats because they often lose a couple of bristles and then you've got to pick them out. So all we do now is just pour it on um, and you're just going to paint this like you would normally with a paintbrush. The, the typical way for shaping is to go length, top to bottom, wet it all out top to bottom and then we'll go sort of 45 degrees just the idea is to get it even so we don't have any high patches so just nice and steady all the way wingtip to wingtip even pressure like that and then this is a small piece so it's not so important but then you can very lightly just sort of go 45 degrees like this Do the same thing the other way. So very light pressure there. That's just basically just dragging the weight of the brush across the surface. And then finish it with a nice gentle, again, very light pressure from wingtip to wingtip. And that will create a nice flat surface. Now what we're also doing is going around the leading edge here. Because we're doing our chemical set, it doesn't matter that we are painting up underneath here. We don't have to re-sand it. We're going to just immediately do our next resin set as soon as this starts to go off. So all you're doing is just cleaning up around the leading edge and trailing edge to make sure there's no significant drips. If you did have any air bubbles or any areas, make sure you get work the resin into them. So they've got a nice fill of resin there. You can also come back at about half an hour or when it starts to tack off a bit and go under and try and clean up some of these drips again. But it's not really going to matter because we're going to do the next coat and then we're just going to sand it all off even if it does have some drips. Try and clean up that back edge. You can hold it underneath of course. like that so you can see under there it's just starting there is some some shiny resin but it doesn't matter actually what I like about doing it this way is that the leading edge gets two coats of resin so it makes it a bit thicker on the leading edge and then I'm just going to move this one over here out of the way just rest it down like that and we'll let that one set do the same for the rear wing. Rest that back down and just do that light pass. Try and smooth that out. Okay, so that's it. So now we're going to wait for that to cure, but not really rock hard. If you accidentally do let it go rock hard, you can flip it and sand that edge and then just do exactly the same process, but once you've sanded it. But like I said, we're going to try and catch it at that perfect moment where, and different resins will have different times. So you can always look up your spec sheets if you're using a different resin system for how long you can leave it before you can do a chemical bond. But for this one, basically if I can stick my fingernail in, if it's still soft enough to do that, then it will chemically bond. And you want it hard enough that when we flip it, it doesn't stick to the table, but soft enough that it's still gonna get that chemical adhesion. So I'll check back in about an hour and we'll see how this is going and we'll do the other side. Okay, so I'm back. It's been about two hours and I think it's ready for the next coat. So if you look at the bucket, it's actually sort of set. The resin has gone pretty much hard in the bucket when you have leftover resin. But on the actual foil, what you're looking for is that it will still dent it. So it's like still kind of soft, but it's, it's firm enough hopefully that we can flip it. But it's, if you had your fingernail, if I didn't have the glove on already, 
it's kind of still just very sticky, you can see that. And you can just dent it with your fingernail. So that's what we're looking for, so that this next resin will actually bond to the first coat. Um, and what all I do is flip it over. Definitely feels still a bit sticky, like that. So it will likely stick to that tape, but like I said, we'll just sand that off tomorrow anyway. Still feels a bit sticky, this is good. And you can see all of these drips and everything that's happening along the leading edge. It doesn't matter because this next set of resin will just sort of bond to all of that and then tomorrow we'll just sand it all smooth. So this is just a way to make it a bit faster and easier than having to now sand this section and then re and recoat it. So if you can time it properly, this is the way I like to do it. So I've already mixed this up. This is another 60 grams of resin, exactly the same as last time. And we are ready to paint new disposable paintbrush. And we're literally just a copy of the last one. Exactly the same process. So if you're wondering how much resin to put on, basically you're trying to make it as, you sort of want it to be nice and thick so that you can sand it, but it'll only take so much, particularly on a, on a slope like this before it just will slowly run over the sides anyway. So you're sort of putting it on nice and thick, thicker than you would put paint on, but then you sort of have to just take some of it out with a light brush like that, and that's basically as good as it gets. And there we have it. Okay, so now we'll let that set overnight and tomorrow we're going to be doing our drilling of the holes to connect to the fuselage and also the final sand and then it is literally ready to fly. So thanks again for watching everyone and I will see you in tomorrow's video.